Hey everybody, welcome back to another Cree tutorial. Today we're going to go over the eyedropper tool or the color sampler tool as it's called in Krita. It's a very simple tool, but the actual tool itself when you select on it has a lot of options to go through, as you can see all over in the tool options. So to start with, it does what you expect it to. When you click and drag, it's going to sample any of those colors on that point. Let me actually zoom in here so we can see. So if I click here, you can see in my color selector, whoops, it's going to take that color and sample it. It's the current color. And if you hit, uh, go back to your brush and you start coloring, you can see it's the same color as what I just picked for the skin. So back to that. So there's a couple different options. Well, there's really only two, op two options to sample the colors. You can do all visible layers. So this means that even if I'm on the line art layer where there's no color, if I go and I start sampling this color, it's going to say, okay, well, every color that's available, it's visible right now, you can sample. So I can still get this black, I can still get this dark purple, I can still get the light purple. It makes things a lot easier when you have a lot of layers to go through. But if you only want to do the current layer, we can do that as well. So as you can see, because on a light art layer and there's no color, I'm clicking and dragging, it's not updating that color at all. It's staying the color I selected last, which is this color here. And if I go to the light art and I go to black, I'm sorry, if I go here, you can see it's starting to update a little bit. And if I let go, changes it to black, and that's pretty much the only color that's available on this layer. So there might be some shades of gray because of the edge of the line. So I could theoretically get some grays out of this, but for the most part, it's just black. I'm going to put that back to all visible layers. So we have update color. So if I am going to select this color, there's going to be a box that shows up next to the black one, which is my current color. And it's going to show me the color that I can potentially get once I let go of the mouse button. And it also updates in the color selector in the upper right hand corner, if you can see. If I turn this off, the only place this is updating is in the tool options at the bottom where it says channel and value. That's giving me specific values for this color that I can put in for the RGB um, options for the colors if I wanted to. I'm actually not going to need to use that right this second, but if you, for example, um, notice that your color is a little bit off and you need a very specific RGB value or percentage, which we'll look at later, you can go ahead and say, all right, I need this really, really dark gray and it's 31, 31, 31. So it'll update it here, but it won't update it in the advanced color selector. And we also have add to palette. So if you haven't done this before, under dockers, you can go to palette and actually pull this off. Go to the bottom left hand corner, we can click on this and go to all the different um, color palettes and pick what we want. So because I had this on by default, which is the animation color set, every shade of purple and black that I've been messing with has appeared right here. So every time I sample this color, it's going to start appearing in the um, palette. So if I want to make a brand new palette, as you can, it just updated. <laughs> we are going to oops, cancel, sorry, wrong one. Just a quick refresher. If you go down to the bottom left hand corner, hit the plus icon, we can make our new palette. We're just going to call it, call it color sampler. All right, and then we're gonna make sure that we update it over here as well. I just use the default, so there's a lot of boxes here. Don't worry about it. You don't have to have that many. So I wanna go through and just kind of sample a bunch of random spots on this. Whoops. All right, and click on the palette and it's updated with every shade of gray and purple that I've tried to sample. So obviously this can get filled up really fast, so only add to palette if you really want those colors. If not, you're gonna have to go through and clean up whatever palette was on by default. Not a big deal, but something to keep in mind. 
but this is a really good option if you have a set character um, design and you want the same colors and you're like, okay, I never saved these colors yet, let me open this file, and then you can just quickly sample all those colors and not have to manually add them anymore. I'm going to turn that off when I put my update color on. All right, so radius and blend. So radius is going to basically sample a color within a specific area. If I put this down to zero, oh, sorry, one, it's going to sample that exact color of that pixel. If I put this up to 20, I'm going to get a much broader range of the color. You can actually see in the color selector how often it's moving. If I put this at 50, oops, You can see it's jumping around a lot more versus one where it's kind of just staying in one area until I go over the black line and make it jump. So at one pixel you're sampling it per pixel and then at 50 or higher you're kind of going like every 50 pixels in that area. And this is nice to get like just not the exact color, but if you're looking to just do some really nice blending or just get some variation of that value, this is a pretty easy way to do it. All right, let's stop messing with that. Put it back to one, whoops. All right, so blend. At 100%, it's not going to do anything. What the blend is gonna do is it's gonna say, wherever you're trying to sample this color, it's gonna kind of blend any other color around it with it. So if I want this down to, well, I'll put this down to 10. So right now there's not, not many colors to blend around this, right? But if I go closer to the black, you can actually see the color updating in that darker purple box. It is blending that purple with the, with the dark gray. So I'm not getting a complete dark gray yet, but it's saying mix the value of the area around it and to, to get a new shade of color. This is really nice because then you can actually make some color um, palettes really nicely without like thinking too much and just to have fun with it and see what you can come up with and then you can also do it um, if you're trying to blend some colors really nicely it'll kind of help give you some mid-range values if you need to I think it's a pretty cool thing so at 75% it's giving me more exact colors but if we go back down to, let's say, 25, it's going to start mixing those colors a little bit. So the lower the value, the more likely it is to mix everything. And the higher it is, the less it's not going to mix anything. It's just going to be that exact color that you pick. And last but not least, the show colors as percentages versus the value, or the RGB value number. Um, if you need the percentage for whatever reason, you can get that there, alpha 100. Do, do, do. And that's pretty much it for the color sampler tool. It's pretty simple, nothing too crazy or fancy, but it has a lot of features that I believe it updated over the years, and I think it's it deserves its own video now. Alright, thanks for watching this video. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them. If there's a tool or feature in Krita that I haven't gone over yet or you want me to go more in depth on, let me know and I'll try and get that going as well. And make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.